What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Tyler underscore TCG here back at it again and welcome to the new way you will be seeing weekly local videos. I have decided to cut out all the audio and the background noise from all the locals videos and have decided to record my own audio over them and give you my own take on the match. So without further ado, let's hop right into round four of locals. We have Dan on the left playing I believe it's Labyrinth his deck is this week, and we see on the right we have Mark playing Tier Elements. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's see the die roll happen. It looks like Dan rolled pretty low. Dan always says how bad he is with the dice rolls, and we see Mark has won the die roll, rolling a 10 it looks like. And Mark will be opting to go first. Definitely a good advantage for him. Looks like we see a Tier Elements Rhino Heart plus a Blazing Cartesia, and I believe I see Triple Tactics Talent. Very interesting choice. I, for myself, am enjoying Triple Tactics Talent right now, but oh, oh, here we go. We see Normal Summon of Rhino Heart dumping any tier element to get his engine going. There we go. We see him dump the Havenus, and the Havenus will be able to start. Use its effect Fusion Summon to make the Kick Colos to either add a tier element or send a tier element. So let's see what we just choose to do here. Probably going for either Sulik or Sheeran if he wants the extra follow-up, or he could add a tier element's Crime, the Counter Trap. And looks like that will be his choice, the tier element's Crime. A lot of uh, a card that not a lot of people played starting off when tier elements uh, started to appear in the metagame, but something that people will definitely adapt to, especially with the new support coming up in Magnificent Mavens that actually releases uh, this week. So we'll see what else Mark wants to do. Oh, he did have the field spell as well. Probably going to add Murley if there's the Murley, and then he'll be able to tribute the Kick Close to special summon the Murley, and then mill eight cards to try and just get as many tier element names in the graveyard. We see a dice to indicate that which tier element names he has used so far which is honestly a very smart decision because it is hard to keep track of these tier elements. So we'll mill the eight here. We see Rhino Heart, Brandon High Spirit, Sheeran, Albion, Triple Tactics, Terraforming, Bestial, Sonyar, I believe that one is, and the Happiness. So that was actually very good. Those were four very good mills for Mark because he hasn't proc'd the um, Rhino Heart effect to summon itself from the graveyard. And then he'll be able to proc the Sheeran effect in the graveyard as well as the Bestial Sonyar, I believe, if that's the correct name, as well as just getting the Brandon High Spirits in the graveyard is very good. So he does have a lot of options here. He can go like Sheeran, Sheeran effect to fusion summon into the Rukalos, or he can uh, fusion summon like to Predator Plant Dragons to Pelia, and then we see uh, activate the effect of Rhino Hearts, sending another copy of Rhino Hearts. So he opened two Rhino Hearts, which isn't the best. And we'll see him proc the Sheeran now, putting the Sheeran back on the bottom of the deck, and it looks like he's trying to figure out what other fusion material he wants to send back. He can send back the Havenus here to make like a Garura. Which would be very good to get him like another get him a draw or something, and then we'll see probably Guru uh, touchdown here. It looks like we just double check which few, uh, cards he's putting back, and there comes the Guru. And if he has the Blazing Cartesia, since he has a monster that mentions Fallen of Albaz or uh, his name, I believe um, Albion the turns his name into Fallen of Albaz while on the field or in the graveyard. So now he has a ten and a six to make the Baron de Fleur, and then he'll be able to get another draw here off the Guru. It looks like he drew into, I think that was Brandon in High Spirits, it looks like. So it looks like he has Triple Tactics, Talent, Tier Element, Crime, and um, the Brandon in High Spirits. So now we can go for a Link Summon here, either into Sprite Elf, or we can, if he plays Sprite Sprine, he can play Sprine to send another copy of the Murley from Deck to Graveyard to get yet another Fusion Summon here. It looks like we're just going to be doing that. We're going to be making Sprine, Sprine Effect, allowing it to dump a level 2 monster from the Deck to the Graveyard, sending the Murley to opt its effect to Fusion Summon. And just get Mark even more card advantage. Then we could send like Tier Element Scream or like any other Tier Element we haven't used yet. I think the only one we haven't used yet. Actually, no, we've gone through every single Tier Element effect. We've used Sheeran, Murley, Havness, and now we, yep, and then we use Rhino Heart as well. So every single Tier Element name has been used this turn. It's definitely uh, showing you know how to play the deck well. It looks like we're taking two Murleys and a Rhino Heart to make a uh, Tier Element Kaleido Heart. And then we'll be using the effect on Summon. Yep, send itself to the grave. Or it's sending it because it's our Cartesia. I'm not very sure. So we're sending, and then we're using Kaleido Heart Effect to revive itself by sending a Tier Element from the deck to the grave. Looks like we're doing Tier Element Scream, and then we're uh, activating Scream Effect to uh, search Tier Element Salik. Just so much insane, crazy value. And this deck is only going to get better after Magnificent Mavens comes out, which will be next week. And then we just set the two, and then we pass. And then we uh, during the end phase, we have we can have extra Cartesia to our hand just to get even more value. So, Dan's got to play through an Omni, two Omni Negates. Uh, ooh. And we see, it looks like Dogmatica Ecclesia, the beautiful ultimate rare as well. That card is so pretty as an ultimate rare. We're going to uh, attempt to activate to search uh, a Dogmatica monster. 
probably going for the flirtily, I would imagine, to uh, bait out the bear into flirting again. We just sully that, just negate the effect. So, no searching for you today, Mr. Dan. Doesn't look like that will be the case. And we're going to send the Kaleido Heart here, and then we're going to activate Kaleido Heart effect to send his hero element. Probably one of the monsters yet there is the Havnus. Now we can proc the Fusion Summon to make, um, I would imagine, we are going to make the Rucolos here, just have the Solemn Warning effect in case Dan has Welcome Labyrinth or. Um, just any any way to special summon a monster. Let's say we have to read over uh, Ecclesia. It's just been this card is the dogmatic effect is just very strange right now. Um, it, it's not like the most meta thing, but like you'll see it come up in these rogue strategies to help boost their power a little bit. We we see the Havnus fuse with itself and the Kick Kalos. We are going to make Rukalos here, and now we have another Omni Negate. Well, not an Omni Negate necessarily. We have another like Solemn Warning esque effect. And then we see, and that has been enough for Dan because he was been able to pop something because uh, a tier, uh, an aqua monster was shuffled in the deck. So we were now going into game two. Dan is probably going to opt to go first here. Probably uh, citing cards in like summon limit. Uh, if he plays dimensional barrier, dimensional barrier would be very good. I see Imperial Iron Wall going into the deck, which makes a lot of sense for Dan because he was talking throughout the day about how he was tired of getting evenly matched. So having the um, Imperial Iron Wall in the deck is very, very good to stop yourself from getting evenly matched. I guess he's just an evenly magnet, is what we call him. So, and we see summon limit. Summon limit's a, uh, a very good call this format if you're playing this deck, because the way tier elements just spit out a bunch of monsters, and just, actually the way the whole like, the whole meta right now just spits out thirty monsters a turn. Summon limit is some a very good counter to this strategy. But if you're Mark going into this, um, I imagine you're just citing like generic back row removal. Oh, we see Draco Utopian Aura in Dan's main deck. That card is. Very, very good and very under very underrated in my personal opinion. But if you're a Mark going into this, you probably side with stuff like Twin Twisters, Lightning Storm, evenly matched, and hopefully Dan doesn't draw the Imperial Iron Wall. And just other and Harpy's Feather Duster. Harpy's Feather Duster is an amazing card. It's the one it's the Saki one of if you if you draw it, you draw it. And looks like we're taking out a bunch of spells from Dan's side. Let's see, it looks like Imperial Iron Wall is going in. It looks like that looks like enemy controller? Huh. But we will just have to see. The players are currently pile shuffling, and then we will see what is going on for game two. But guys, let me know what you guys think of the new set Magnificent Mavens down in the comment section down below. Let me know what you're going to be playing this format. Are you going to choose something fun and try and defeat the tier zero threat that is uh, a Shizu tier element? Or are you just going to hop on the Shizu tier element train? Choo choo. But yeah, without further ado, let's get ready to hop right into it. We're going to see Dan probably opt to go first because it, because he just plays so many trap cards and it's just so much value. And here we go. The player's going to draw their five for turn and Dan is opting to go first, as is no one's surprise. Doesn't look like he drew a lot of traps. I see Welcome Labyrinth in the hand. I see a spell. Could that be the field spell? Uh, Amazing Labyrinth or Labyrinth Labyrinth or something like that. And Oh, no, it's Pod Duality, uh, able to dig three. We see an Adir Servant, Imperial Iron Wall, and Dogmatic Punishment. I don't think you take the Dogmatic Punishment in this situation because it's just going to be able to proc the tier elements effects, and you just don't want to do that. So we're going to take the Imperial Iron Wall. So no getting even lead today for Mr. Dan. And then we normal summon. I believe that is Ariana. Uh, I believe she either sets a uh, Labyrinth Spell Trap or just searches it, Gener uh, just is able to search it. Once I, I see, I do see a lot of trap cards in that, hand, in that opening hand, now that I think about it. Let's see, does Mark have any, of course Mark, Mark has the Merlin, Mark always draws what he needs, and we see Havnus, Harpy's Feather Duster, as well as Albion, the Shrouded Dragon, going to Grave. So, as soon as this chain resolves, allowing Dan to search, it looks like that is the field spell, Labyrinth, Labyrinth, then we're going to use the Havnus Effect 2 uh, Fusion Summon with itself and the other Havnus, probably making a Kid Kalos, and then Kid Kalos is probably going to dump a copy of either Sheeran or Merlin to the Graveyard, to just... Allow Dan allow Mark to get yet another fusion summon and stop Dan's uh, strategy from here. And we see that looks like Lady Labyrinth of the White Castle. I believe that's what her name is. I don't know these uh, labyrinth cards names at all, guys. I promise to learn them and try to understand them a little bit better. Now we see the the Sheer. So he sends Sheer into graveyard. Now we're gonna proc the Sheer and affect the fusion summon. We're probably gonna make the Rucolos here. Yep, there's the Rucolos. Just the amazing solemn warning. Uh, solemn warning effect on it is fantastic. And then it looks like Dan's in a pretty tight spot. I see, actually, that looks like two copies of Welcome Labyrinth in the hand. Activating the field spells, setting the Imperial Iron Wall, and the two copies of Welcome Labyrinth. 
So it doesn't look like, looks like Marcus is going to read over Welcome Labyrinth real quick and try to understand what the card does. Reading the card explains the card. Uh, so a skill that many Yu-Gi-Oh players don't know how to do is read. I am guilty, I am guilty of that as well, of not being able to read my cards. It looks like we have a t copy of Tier Element Heartbeat in Mark's hand, as well as the Primitive Planet. Or is that two? It looks like two copies of Primitive Planet and Tier Element's Heartbeat. And it looks like he has Rhino Heart in hand as well. So Mark opening very, very well going into game two, just to be able to clear all of Dan's interruptions. And we see the Rukos here is going to negate the activation of the Welcome Labyrinth because it does include the effect to special summon a monster. So we'll just see what happens here. Looks like you just uh, understanding what the, just doesn't, Dan doesn't know what the card does yet because it, at time of recording this video, the cards were still very new to the players and trying to understand what they do and everything. Looks like Dan is not happy with Mark being able to just negate the summon. Let's see what's happening here. And yep, it looks like, yep, that is going to resolve. And now the Ruklos sends itself. And then Ruklos's effect will activate. And then he'll be able to, yep, there you go, sending one. Uh, so, no, sorry, the, the field spell is going to resolve searching the tier elements Merly. And then here comes the Ruklos back from the graveyard. And I guess either, now we have a conflict normal summon. We can either normal summon, I believe, the Rhino Heart that I saw in the hand, or the Murley. Or is that a triple tax Talonder's hand? It looks like a triple tax. Hmm. And since the Ruklos is a new card, I do believe he'll be able to use the Solemn Warning effect again, if he has it. And there, yep, there's the second copy of Welcome Labyrinth. That card, I don't believe, says once per turn on it, which is very cool. Oh, uh, no, nope. it does say one. Nope, it does say it. So it looks like Dan is just going to be scooping up his cards here and just admitting defeat to Mark because Mark just has so much value and advantage on him. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoy the new uh, way you're going to be seeing Locals content. Please let me know uh, anything you want to see in the comments section below. And thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe.